Welcome back to The Mindful Hunter. I'm your host as always, Jay Nichol. And today, we're gonna to try to accomplish the very difficult task of deciphering which of these two tripod pan heads are superior. And if we can't answer that question, maybe more specifically, answer the question of which one is a better choice for you, depending on your particular preferences and needs as a hunter. Now, before we get into that, I want to I want to basically introduce this category because I would say these are both very clearly ultralight pan heads. Now, previously, the options that would have filled this spot in your backpack would have been one of these and may still be one of these, depending on what you prefer. But this is the C-Ray VA5 fluid head and the Outdoorsman's non-fluid pan head. Now I have run both of these for multiple years, and if you want to see a back-to-back -back comparison of these two pan heads, click the link in the upper corner right now and go watch that video because I think it does a very good job of highlighting the differences and characteristics between a fluid head and a non-fluid head and kind of why you may want one of these or another. There's a big discrepancy in price, there's a big discrepancy in weight, but we're not gonna dive into that today. But what I what I did wanna say is, because most of you out there who are looking at these heads are probably running something like this, something in the pound range that's like, you know, fairly full featured, yet still somewhat minimalist. It, it already has some compromises built in. It's not a big gigantic fluid head, it's a backcountry head. And, and, and these do some things very well. I'm a lock and scan kind of guy. Like when I glass, especially with a spotting scope, I move my field of view until I'm looking at like an 80% new sight picture with a little bit of overlap of my previous one. And then I lock down my scope and I look all around and I stay there for you know a few seconds, 30 seconds, depending on how complicated the train is. And then I open up my pan adjustment I pan until I'm looking at 80% new sight picture. I lock it back down and I look inside again. Um, and for th that type of glassing experience, the Outdoorsman's is superior and has been basically my favorite lock and glass tripod head. Now, what the C-Ray did incredibly well was fluid panning, even with particular heavy optics. The thing about the Outdoorsman's is once you got up to like an 85 or 95 spotter, if you opened that tilt at all, the thing just tipped forward. It's just not built to handle that kind of weight. And while it locks down really nice, the difference between fully locked and fully unlocked is like a quarter of a turn. It's very finicky to get it to the point that there's just enough resistance to like, you know, pan smoothly or tilt smoothly without the optic just slopping around on you. Now, why am I talking about that? And the reason I'm introducing these particular characteristics is that I think, in a way, these two new ultralight heads do what these older lightweight heads did, but better and worse, and they've combined them. So here's what I'm, here's what I'm trying to get at. I don't think they lock down quite as nice as the outdoorsmen's, and I don't think they pan with reliable you know, pressure and friction quite as nice as the C-Ray, but the thing they do that's better than both is that they combine them. They have a better lockdown functionality than the C-Ray. The C-Ray, like no matter how hard you twist that thing, it'll still move on you. I can't tell you how many times I've like locked in on something at 70 times power on my Zeiss Harpy, and I go to put the digiscope on and by pushing the eyepiece it's just enough to switch it a few degrees and it's just like it's infuriating like the tilt locks pretty good but the pan doesn't lock for shit on the c-ray both these lock better than the c-ray and both these pan better than the outdoorsman's so when i first started looking at the wiser because the wiser came out before the tracer did I was looking at it as an auxiliary pan head, like something I would take where I really needed to focus on weight. But just looking at it, I had kind of made the assumption that the functionality would be far reduced from something with a much beefier construction like the Outdoorsman's pan head or the C-Ray VA5. I was totally um, wrong on that. Uh, and I wish I had gotten around to trying the wiser sooner, to be honest with you. I was, now, 
the way the 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 wiser and the night hawk work, hawk work is that you twist the handle in order to open and close the tilting functionality and then you have a secondary handle over here that you you twist open and close to adjust the panning functionality and I, there was just something about a twisting handle that put me off I really liked my two little knobs and then having a separate handle and I'll take a moment and say that has been you know primarily what I've always used for pan heads and for pan heads what the most popular design is is like two independent locks and a handle now there's lots that don't have that I'm just saying that from my experience that's what I had been used to and I think one of the innovative things that both of these companies has have done is move the tilting functionality right into the adjustment handle and therefore I mean reducing the need for like a whole extra piece of gear on your tripod now as far as the capacities I will say all of these can handle a 95 millimeter spotting scope. These ones are gonna handle it just a touch better, but you can muscle it through with these ones. I wouldn't go up to a full standing position and a 95 millimeter with any type of lightweight tripod with any of, of these and still expect to have like a vibration free viewing experience because I don't think that's gonna happen but that's gonna be difficult to achieve on any lightweight tripod with any tripod head. Um, and it's not something that I do very frequently anyways. Now they can handle a 95, but it's also going to be a some, it, they're not ideally built for 95s. Like the actual functionality of moving it around and trying to have just the right amount of back pressure when you're tilting and panning can be a little bit finicky with these. I'm starting to move my primary recommendations from one of these because, you know, this is in the $200 range and this is in the $400 range. Uh, so it was kind of like if you had a bit more money, I used to say the Outdoorsman's Pan Heads, and if you had a bit less money, I used to say the Sea Ray 5. But I'm starting to move my recommendations over to one of these depending on what your priorities are. Because for most individuals that aren't professional videographers, these are more than enough pan head for what you do in the backcountry. And I do shoot a ton of video and I'm actually the camera that's shooting this right now is sitting on a second wiser pan head. I've come to like kind of the functionality of this one so much and weight really isn't an issue when you're talking about your home studio. And I've switched all my gear over to Arca Swiss now simply because it's so much more compatible and easier to use. So now that we've kind of established the two main categories of lightweight and ultralight, the two basic functionalities, you know, back pressured panning and tilting and the lockdown functionality and how, you know, these are great tripod heads. Um, I own two of these. I own one of these. I've had this one. This was one of the first tripod heads I ever bought. Um, I've had it for possibly six years now. I can't even remember. And it still works as good today as it did the day I bought it. Um, I'm a huge fan of outdoorsman's gear personally. But to be quite honest with you, I, I did two back-to-back -back winter goat hunts. I took this one on the first one and this one on the second one. And after those two experiences, they're going to be what goes in my backpack from now on. They're just for what I do and the weights that I'm trying to achieve. Like, let's put things in perspective. The Sea Ray weighs a pound, 16 ounces. The Outdoorsman's weighs 11 ounces for a savings of 5 ounces. And these are significantly less, which we're going to get into in a moment. But the, these are in a different category altogether. So, um, I mean, they weigh less than half of what the Outdoorsman's weighs. So if you're trying to shave weight and you don't mind a little bit of a compromise in your pan head, I guarantee one of these is going to be the direction you want to go. Now, let's actually get into a back-to-back -back comparison of these two tripod heads. I have essentially a love-hate relationship with reviews like this because the products are so similar and yet there are a few minor differences that are quite significant. It makes it very difficult to come out with an absolute statement that one of these pieces of gear is objectively and clearly better than the other piece of gear. So that's why I hate it. But what I love about it is that the nuances between these two pieces of gear 
when you take the time and dive into it and really get to know them, I think once we once we share them, I, I do think one of these is going to fit your needs the best, depending on what you want to prioritize. And that's why I love it, because we're kind of getting into the minutia and the nuance, which is kind of fun for me in a weird way. So first of all, let's start with price. Now the Tracer comes in at 189 US dollars and the Wiser comes in at 299 bucks. So right out of the gate, that's a pretty big discrepancy. You can buy this one for less than 200 bucks and you can buy this one for just under 300 bucks. So almost, it's like a 33% savings over the Wiser. So we can't ignore that. That's a significant difference in price. Now where else is there a significant difference? Now the Tracer, in this configuration with all of these components comes in at 4.5 ounces on the button. I'd like to give a huge shout out to Tracer. I weigh shit constantly and I almost never get stuff that weighs what it is advertised as weighing on the website. This thing, bang on. It was beautiful. So really appreciate that Tracer and Wiser, exact same thing. So in this configuration, uh, this tripod head weighs six ounces. So again, depending on how you look at that, you could think that's a significant difference or an insignificant difference. If we look at it in terms of absolute figures, 1.5 ounces doesn't seem a whole lot. However, if we look at it in terms of relative difference, this pan head weighs 15% or 1.5 ounces less than this pan head. So, so far, cheaper and lighter. It's like you're starting to think like the odds are stacking up against you, but let's keep going on. Let's talk a little bit about warranty. Um, for starters, I have talked with both of the owners and the lead designers of these companies. They are both great guys and seem to really care about hunting and hunters and just want to make really cool gear. So I, I do feel like I will tell you what the warranty says, but I also feel like these are both pretty reasonable guys and if something were to happen, they're probably gonna take care of you. Now that being said, on the website, Tracer offers a one year limited warranty. So limited warranties cover manufacturer defects and material defects for one year. Now Wiser offers the same limited warranty, but for life. So. That to me is an extremely significant difference. That means 10 years from now, you know, one of these threads could let go or, you know, one of these pieces of metal, I don't know, maybe you do a lot of winter and summer hunting and there's a lot of heat extremes and you get a, a small crack or a fissure develop. I mean, there are definitely a lot of different mechanical moving parts on here. So maybe something lets go or maybe one of these C clips pops out. I mean, who knows? But for the lifetime of this product, you are going to be able to return it as long as it's some type of manufacturer defect. Neither of these have an unconditional warranty, okay? Nothing like a Vortex warranty. Like if you drive over these with your truck, you're done. They're not gonna replace them. They also both have a money back guarantee, but they're both in their own languages, basically say like it's gotta be brand new. So you could buy one, you could take it home. I'm sure you could mount a spotting scope or a pair of binoculars play around with it for half an hour, and if you just ultimately decided it wasn't for you, both these companies are gonna give you your money back. But just to reiterate, Tracer has a one-year limited warranty, and Wiser has a lifetime limited warranty. So where are these things built? Tracer's built in China. So if that's a deal breaker for you, you should know that right now. I'd like to give some credit to the owner of Tracer. He does not try to hide that in any way, shape, or form. It says it right on the box. When I texted him about it on Instagram, he said they used to manufacture all their stuff in San Diego and to get the product to a price point that he thought was reasonable for backcountry hunters, the, his only option was to go overseas. And I'm not gonna uh, you know, judge him for that. I think that's a business decision everyone's gotta make in order to hit the kind of profits and, and pricing strategies that you wanna hit. But I do know that in this particular climate, some people feel very strongly about Chinese built components. So just to be clear, Tracer is built in China, kind of at scale. I don't know how many at a time and I don't know what factory, but that's where it comes from. Wiser is built about an hour from my house in Washington. Um, 
Yeah, and he, the, 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 the original founder of Wiser, still manufactures all the products. He has C, CNC machines at his house. Everything is kind of custom made, albeit at scale and manufactured in their facility in Washington, which is, I'm in BC, obviously in Vancouver, but just across the border is, is Washington. He's literally minutes across the border. So as far as manufacturing goes, and this, I think where these are manufactured is going to start to play into the rest of my comments, a tracer coming in at China and Wiser coming in at the good old USA, specifically the state of Washington. Now, as far as mounting, these are identical. Arca Swiss, uh, the only thing to note is that the Wiser opens a little bit further. The interesting thing about Arca Swiss is that people use the term like it's a rigidly defined system and it's not. Um, really Right Stuff came out with the definition of what most people have assumed to be Arca Swiss and they've used those measurements in order to build Arca Swiss compliant um, plates and adapters, but there's no like unified definition of Arca Swiss. So when you get something with an Arca Swiss plate on it, a perfect example is this um, C-Ray VA5 head, which says it's Arca Swiss compliant and says that the adapter plate is the same size as Arca Swiss. But when you go to put on almost any other Arca Swiss, there's like an eighth of an inch of play in here. Like it's crazy. It will not lock down. You have to do this really interesting thing where you keep pulling this adapter out and, and circling it back and then close and close and close. And it does have kind of a cool feature that this additional kind of uh, pressure plate here actually has a lot of play in, in it and can move quite far. So you can get this to fit kind of universally recognized Arca Swiss adapters, but at first glance you think it doesn't. So it is an interesting thing to note that the Wiser is slightly more um, adaptable or would fit slightly larger Arca Swiss plates. Now the other thing about mounting that I want to mention about the Wiser is that it has a completely removable top plate. So this actual plate that tightens and loosens and holds your adapter plate and therefore your optic to the device has you know a small bolt with an Allen key slot in it. So you could actually undo this bolt and take this right off. And then somebody might ask, well, why would you want to do that? Because then you wouldn't be able to use it. Arguably, you could put a different adapter plate on here. You could probably mount an outdoorsman's quick adapter uh, with a little bit of work. Um, and maybe he has some plans for modular systems in the future that I'm personally unaware of. But it, it does future-proof it in a little bit. And the nice thing is if something in this system broke, you could literally undo this screw and just send back this one system and replace it. So I do think this design feature is a little bit more robust, whereas the tracer is just all one piece. Obviously the two axes operate independently, so you kind of have one post here and one post here, uh, but the, uh, this doesn't actually separate or come off. So now let's talk about manufacturing quality. And I'm gonna double up at the same time and talk about something else that I'm just gonna call hand feel because I don't really know what else to define the term as. So for both those categories, I'm giving the Tracer a four out of five and I'm giving the Wiser a five out of five. Now, let me tell you why. Let's take for example, this thumb dial that you use to tighten and loosen the Arca Swiss adapter. Now, once you loosen it, maybe like a half a turn, you can almost hear like some friction and it doesn't, sloppy's not the wrong word. It's not like there's play, but it's like you can feel the threads and some parts of the rotation are smooth and have like mm, reliable back pressure. And then you'll get to another spot and it just kind of like rolls over. And so you can tell that the, the machining tolerances, while good and very satisfactory, are not what I would call premium. Like it doesn't have that buttery feel. It's a little bit gritty and it's a little bit, I don't want to say herky-jerky, but again, these are very minor things, but I make a living off of noting very minor things. Now when we come over here to the wiser, when you, when you twist this, You hear nothing. And it does have that very reliable, very consistent, 
like buttery feel to it. Like it's like it's a pleasure just to use the device. You know what I mean? Like you just it has that feeling of of quality to it. And the pressure remains the same the whole way out. It's not like once you get to a certain place, it then gets sloppy. Now, one of the things I did notice in my initial testing is that there are springs mounted in here that push back out on this side of the adapter plate. And I think that might be what sets it apart because when you open the tracer the whole way, while it does have You know, I don't know if you're going to be able to hear this, but if I open this all the way up and then that's all the way closed, open this guy, hear it already, and then close this one, you can hear that kind of metal on metal sound. Not a big deal but you do feel the same type of discrepancy in hand feel, which is kind of transitions into manufacturing or it's a proxy for manufacturing quality. Like the Wiser is just smooth and buttery and reliable and the Tracer is just not, not quite as much. Again, it's a very minor difference, but, I, but it is a significant difference depending on what you prioritize. Now let's talk about accessories. So when you open the tracer box, this is everything. It's put together like this. It's in this cool little like foam in insert inside of a box. You open it up and that's it. I was a little disappointed because it doesn't come with an adapter plate, which in my opinion is a bit of a miss. Adapter plates are pretty cheap. What if this is your first pan head and you own a Kawa spotting scope? You have no way to mount that Kawa spotting scope to this pan head. You're then gonna have to hop on Amazon, and I know it's only a couple bucks, but it's a pain in the ass step that as a consumer, I bought a device, I should be able to get that device in my house and just use it. Also, I have lots of like little plates kicking around, but I tend to have multiple devices mounted on multiple things at a time. When I buy a new pan head, I expect that it's gonna come with a new adapter plate. All of my Adap uh, tripod heads have come with adapter plates with the exception of the Outdoorsman's and when you check out at the Outdoorsman's website it's like big bold letters this product does not come with an adapter plate if you want one and then it gives you some links or it tells you where to go buy an adapter plate and the reason they do that is because they have their own system um, that, that is not Arca Swiss. And you can get Arca Swiss adapter plates, you can get Outdoorsman's adapter plates, you can do kind of whatever, whatever you want. The other reason though is, if you're using the Outdoorsman systems, they have device by device systems. So if you bought a binocular adapter, it's gonna go right on to here. Now, on that note, to be fair to Tracer, they also have a binocular adapter on their site. Now it's only gonna mount on certain binoculars. Like if you don't, if you've got the Swarovski NL Pures, you can't use their binocular adapter because you need to get a aftermarket stud installed to use that style and I don't think that's compliant. But let's say you own Vortex binoculars, you can take out the little cap and screw this thing in and then put the binocular adapter right in. And if you do that, you don't need the adapter plate. But if you take your camera in the back country, if you take your spotting scope in the back country, any of that kind of stuff, you will need an adapter plate. So just plan on buying it. Arca Swiss adapter plates are relatively inexpensive. Now the other interesting area where Wiser stands apart in the accessories category is that it ships with this kind of thread adapter for the bottom. So if you have a tripod with a different thread pitch, you they, they've got your back. And it also ships with a secondary tilt functionality handle. So basically you take this adapter handle, which is the same form factor as the pan functionality handle, 
and you would spin the large carbon fiber handle off and spin this handle on and you would greatly reduce the size and you would also greatly reduce the weight. And the funny thing is when you take off this handle and replace it with this handle, it then brings the spotting scope to the exact same weight as the tracer. So I kind of like this handle and it's not something that I would be willing to lose just to save an ounce and a half. But if that's something that you want to do, Wiser's got your back and they send it to you. Okay. That's really it for categories of comparison. I want to make one more note about the difference in functionality between the two. And this is like going to be super minor and a little bit OCD for most people. And you're probably not going to care, but I would feel remiss if I, if I left it out. So when you open up the tilting functionality with, so let's say you have this mounted on a tripod, you're done glassing, you collapse it, and you're gonna put it away in the zippered side pocket of your backpack. What you're gonna do, you would not put it away like this. You're gonna have this six inch handle sticking out for no reason. What you're gonna do is you're gonna open up the tilting functionality. You're gonna bring this all the way down to 90 degrees. This is gonna nest in between two of the tripod legs, and then you're gonna spin this closed. This is gonna be about the same diameter as the actual tripod leg, so you're not gonna have anything sticking out, and you're gonna have like this nice smooth package that's gonna stick away in your backpack. Now, you would assume you would be able to do the same thing with the tracer, but you would be wrong. Because of the diameter of the mounting plate on the tracer, the handle itself comes into contact before this can go down to 90 degrees. Now, I don't see anyone ever glassing at this angle. I'm not gonna go so far as to say that this angle inhibits some type of performance functionality because it doesn't. This is merely my kind of annoyance. And the reason I know this is that I was walking along and like my backpack kept sticking me in the back of the shoulder. Now, when you take it out and put it the other way, depending on how full your backpack is, having this one thing kind of sticking out can make the zipper kind of tough to close. Again, not the end of the world, not a, 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 an item that I would solely base a buying decision upon, but it is certainly like food for thought. You know, it's almost, it goes back to the kind of, maybe I'll save this for my like wrap up conclusions, but it's just another example of where the build quality of the Wiser, in my opinion, is just a little bit higher than that of the Tracer. Okay, there we have it. That is basically all the things that I could think of to compare on these two units. And I'm gonna make this very simple for you. If budget is your ultimate priority, you should buy the Tracer. It is perfectly capable. I found no flaws glassed with it for a whole week, looking for goats at minus 20 degrees Celsius or minus five degrees Fahrenheit. It performed flawlessly. I have no complaints about it. And at $189, it's a hell of a good deal. On the other hand, if build quality and longevity um, and some, you know, a little more robust design features are your priority, I would recommend you go with the Wiser. I feel like it's a little bit more of a pleasant experience just using this piece of gear. Now it does cost $110 more, which is not an insignificant amount of money. So if that's gonna play a primary role in your decision-making process, like I already said, feel free to go with the Tracer. I don't think you're gonna regret your purchase. But for my kit, what I'm using, I'm probably gonna stick with the Wiser. I like the, the, the longer handle a little bit more. It's a little bit more comfortable to um, move your gear with. Like for instance, when you use binoculars, you, you put the handle out front because if you try and look at binoculars like this, you end up hitting the handle with your chin. And the fact that this sticks out a little bit further kind of makes it easier to, to move my binoculars around. Like it's just a bit more of a, a comfortable viewing experience. Um, yeah, so, and and for me, an ounce and a half, 
I mean, man, I've got toilet paper rolls that weigh more than an ounce and a half. I've got, I take up like one battery for any of these cameras that I take weighs multiple ounces. I don't really feel like an ounce and a half is going to be the be all and end all of my buying decision. I think for me, the, the build quality, the lifetime warranty, the being manufactured just up the road for my backpack, I got to go with the wiser. However, I'll say it one more time, I think for a budget option, Tracer knocked it out of the park. I have no complaints other than this right here, which is a fairly minor fix. Like th this could have been notched or could have been thinner up here. This base plate could have had a smaller diameter to match that of the wiser. I mean, there was a bunch of different options that could have solved that issue. That's my only complaint with the Tracer. So there you have it, the Tracer LP versus the Wiser PH170 Nighthawk Panhead Review. Now, if you like these types of reviews, can I strongly suggest that you go join Mindful Reviews. You can find it at mindful-reviews.com. That is the membership-based platform I'm, I'm building in order to support unbiased, unsponsored, highly technical, in-depth reviews for hunters by hunters. I'm not going to go into a big spiel. If you go to the website, everything's explained, but there's tons of kick-ass raffles and I give away badass prizes every month. Coming up next month, I'm giving away a full GoPro Hero 11 Black kit to any lifetime member on Mindful Reviews. So if you like these kind of reviews, go join the platform. You will not be disappointed. Up next, if you can engage with this content in any way, shape, or form, I would greatly appreciate it. Like, comment, share, subscribe, post it to an IG story. It means a lot to me and it helps get the word out there. And finally, if you have any more questions, if you're curious about something that I failed to address in this film, or you think I messed something up and you wanna get in touch with a correction, um, you can email me at j at mindfulhunter.com. You can shoot me a DM on Instagram at mindful underscore hunter, or you can go join the platform and we can message all day and chat in the forums on there. But please don't hesitate to contact me if I can help in any way, shape or form, I'm more than happy to do so. So that's it for the review folks. And as always, thanks for tuning in.